Hi friends and welcome back to our channel. I am Michelle and this is my daughter Stephanie. Hey! In this video we are going to take these IKEA curtains and we are going to transform them in round two of our inexpensive hack makeovers. Um, IKEA home hacks can be found everywhere and for good reason. You can tweak so many of their products for a customized home decor, home furniture look on a minimal budget. And that's just what we did with these married curtains. Several years ago, before we even started our blogging journey and our YouTube channel, we took a basic pair of navy blue curtains from Ikea and added a little bit of detailing to the top with some white paint and a stencil. And even eight years later, they still look as good as new and they look awesome. All right, anyone would agree that you can't have navy curtains in a black and white room. So our plan is to take Rit dye and transform them to the dark side for this Star Wars themed room and have them a deep dark black. Have you ever tried to use Rit dye to change the look of clothing or home decor items in your home? Let us know in the comments below. Okay, did you know that you can dye fabric in your washing machine? Like, mind blown! You don't have to sit over a hot stove or have this gigantic bin to do it in. And it's so much less messy. So I've never used dye before, but it seems simple enough. I know you have and it can be messy, but that's why we're attempting this washing machine method today. And as I started doing research for this project, I came across a ton of frequently asked questions. And so we're gonna address each of those in our video today. So just stay tuned, get a pen and paper out if you want, and we are gonna cover all of these as we go along. Including how to dye fabric in both a top loading and front loading washing machine. Now, if we don't answer your question um, in this video, make sure you drop us a line and we will answer it for you. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is prepare your fabric for a dye bath, and that is to give it a pre-wash. This is gonna make sure that you don't have any blemishes or stains or anything on that fabric that is gonna prevent it from absorbing that stain. While the curtain panels are being washed and getting prepared for the dye, let's talk about what supplies you're going to need. Now you're going to need the dye and Rit dye comes in a powdered formula or liquid. And you'll also need to know how much dye you're going to need for your project. And so for every pound of dry fabric you have, you'll need two boxes of dry powder Rit dye or one bottle of the liquid Rit dye. We also used a color stay fixative, the RIT color stay fixative, and that is going to lock in your color. And this is especially important if you're doing a um, dark color or bright colors, that's really going to help lock in that color and it's going to help to also reduce fading. You'll also need salt or vinegar, and that is going to depend on the type of fabric that you are dyeing. So if you're dyeing cotton, linen, hemp, rayon, you'll use salt, and you'll use one cup of salt for every one pound of dry fabric. And then if you're going to be dyeing nylon, silk, or what's the, the More third one? synthetic fabrics. The six, well, it's not necessarily synthetic. Wool is not a synthetic, and that's one oh. of them, so wool. Um, then you want to choose vinegar, and that's going to help lock in that color as well. And um, you use one, one yeah, one cup okay. again to every one pound of the dry fabric. You'll also want to have a little dish detergent handy and you're only going to use about a teaspoon so don't stress and go out and buy a huge thing but this is just going to help promote level dyeing in your fabric. You'll also want a pair of insulated rubber gloves. One because you know you're going to be working with hot water you don't want to burn yourself and you don't want to have pink hands when you're done or whatever color you're working with. So use that just as a precaution to stay clean and protect yourself. You'll also want to have a large metal spoon. This is more for if you're using a top loading machine so that you can stir the fabric, make sure it's not tangled up. And another thing that's good to have on hand is like a big bowl for mixing or some measuring cups and spoons. This is just going to help you measuring out that salt or vinegar. And then when we get to it later in the video, we're going to talk about how to dissolve that salt before adding it to your water. So just a large bowl is helpful for that as well. 
All right, now that the curtain panels are out of their pre-wash, we're ready to get going. And I'm a little nervous because I haven't done it before. But on the other hand, you I figure, <laughs> well, yeah, I can. <laughs> and so can you. <laughs> but I figure if I really do mess them up and don't like them, I'm only down the drain 25 bucks for the dye supplies and I can go out and buy curtains. But we're trying to keep things frugal on this makeover, so we're banking on this working. So come give it a go with me. We'll walk you through all the steps for dyeing fabric in your washing machine, whether it's top or front loading. And then also at the end of the video, we will go through all those frequently asked questions. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end and don't miss any of those questions. And then feel free to ask any if you have any questions we didn't cover. We've also put together a free downloadable PDF guide of all the steps for dyeing fabric in your washing machine. So you can find that in our pinned comment. Step number one, you want to remove your fabric from the washing machine and set that off to the side for a minute. And then you're going to set your water temperature to the hottest possible setting that you can. And you're going to fill it with the most water that you can. You want your fabric to move freely inside the washing machine and have plenty of room to let that dye mix around. And if you're doing large items like we are, like a curtain panel, you'll probably want to do one panel at a time. And in fact, for mine, I did one panel in my top loading machine and one panel in her front loader. And we were able to show you both ways to do it. Now, if you're using the powdered dye, you will need to mix that with water to get that dissolved before you add it to the dye bath. So you'll mix one package to two cups of really hot water, use a whisk, make sure everything is dissolved, and then you can stir it into the dye bath. If you're using a liquid dye, just make sure to shake that bottle really well before you add that to the dye bath. Now the biggest difference here for using a top or front loading machine is that if you're using a front loader, you can't stop and like pause your cycle and add things while it's going. You have to just start it and let it go. For a top loader with either batch of the liquid dye or your powdered that you've mixed into liquid, you can add that directly to the tub of your washing machine and stir that in with your metal spoon. For the front loader, put that wet fabric into your machine, close the door, and then you want to dilute your liquid dye bottle or your powdered dye with even more water before you add it to the machine because that's going to enter the machine through the detergent receptacle and it's gonna go directly onto the fabric before mixing with all the other water. For either method, after you get the dye and the fabric in the machine, you'll set it to the hottest setting possible and set it for a wash cycle for a minimum of 30 minutes, but it can be in there up to an hour. All right, we are on step three, and this is adding the salt or the vinegar to your dye bath. And so if it's vinegar, you don't need to worry about really diluting that, but the salt we need to dissolve in hot water. So you're gonna have one cup of salt per one pound of dry fabric. So you need to dissolve that one cup of salt in two cups of really hot water. And you'll have to stir that quite a bit to get it to dissolve. And then you can pour that directly into the dye bath in your washing machine if it's a top loader. And if it's a front loader, it's going to actually go into that detergent tray again and just slowly pour that in and it will go into your machine with your dye bath. Yeah, and if two cups of water isn't enough, you may need to add a little bit more hot water. Just make sure that it's dissolved before you add it to your machine. We're on step four now, and we're going to add the liquid dish detergent, and we're going to add a teaspoon into the detergent tray in a top loader or directly into the dye bath in a top loading machine. Yeah, and you don't have to measure it, just, you know. A little, little bit, a, bit a little bit of teaspoon. Just a little bit. And that's gonna really help that dye to just get everywhere. Now we're on to step five for the top loader. Once everything has been added to the machine, get your metal spoon and just really stir it all together well. Then you can add that wet fabric back into the dye bath and you're going to stir it constantly for 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes is key to get the most level um, and what's the word? Even dyeing. That's it. 
So those 10 minutes are really important. Just make sure that like you're pushing that fabric down into the dye, you're swirling it. If it's a long curtain panel like we're doing, I did pull it out and just make sure it wasn't tangled up just to make sure that every square inch of that fabric gets covered and is submerged in the dye. And also, when you're doing that part, make sure you've got your gloves on. Oh, yes. Yeah, because it's going to be messy. Yep. So after that 10 minutes, you're going to set your wash cycle to, again, a minimum of 30 minutes. I let mine set up to an hour. And the tricky part with having HE machines anymore is you kind of have to learn how to override the wash cycle. So for mine, I got mine started and then I paused it so that it would actually soak. <laughs> Otherwise it was going to start washing and rinsing and you don't want that to happen. So be familiar with your machine. If you can pause it, do that. I would periodically go in and stir the fabric again, just make sure it was all submerged for that whole hour. And can I say too, on a uh, front loader, it's a little bit different because there is, you don't want it to just pause and not, right. because it doesn't stay in the liquid unless it's churning. And so we did just do an extra long wash, wash cycle and set that for a long, longer period. And so that it was churning that whole 60 minutes. Right. All right, step six is really important. If you're going to be adding that color stay fixative, you need to set your machine so that it doesn't rinse. You want to keep the dye still on your fabric when you're adding that. So you want it to drain and spin, but we're going to not rinse. And so for that, you'll have to just figure out how your machine does that. Just remember that that fixative is really going to lock in that color for dark and bright colors. And if you're not going to add a fixative, then you can just go ahead and let your fabric rinse and spin. And then you can go, then you can go ahead and add some detergent um, and then let it just wash out the dye. All right, step seven. If you are planning to use that um, color stay fixative after the fabric has um, rinsed and spun, pull it out, set it to the side for a minute for the top loader. You're gonna fill that washing machine tub up again with as much hot water as you can. And you're going to add in four ounces of this color stay fixative for every dry pound of fabric and then you're gonna stir it in well, put your fabric back in, and then start a normal wash cycle for a minimum of 20 minutes. Then you can let it rinse, spin, and move on from there. If you're using a front loader, keep your fabric, your wet fabric, in the washing machine, and you're gonna just add that fixative to that detergent receptacle. After that cycle has finished for either the front or top loading machine, leave the fabric in there and you're gonna run another cycle, this time just with some mild detergent. Let it wash, rinse, spin, and then you can go ahead and dry it from there. Now that we're done dyeing the fabric, you are probably wondering how do you clean your machine? And you don't need to worry about that because People have been dyeing fabric in their machines for years and it won't stain or dye your metal components inside your washing machine. But if you do have the plastic or rubber seal like I do in my front loader, if you don't clean it right away, it may stain it. But none of us wants to have a black or a pink or purple washing machine. So you do wanna do a little bit of cleaning and we're gonna walk you through that right now. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is just take an old towel, wipe around the lid or for your front loader, the gaskets, the plastic parts. Then you're gonna throw three old towels into your machine and you're gonna do a load with detergent and a couple cups of bleach and it's gonna clean your machine like it's brand new. Just make sure, again, that you're using the hottest water setting. All right, for just 25 bucks, we were able to totally transform those curtain panels and they look fantastic in the room. So if you are trying to update a room and you wanna do it on a budget, you don't need to run out and buy all new items. Maybe consider dyeing them with some Rit dye and transforming them and making them look perfect for your space. Did you notice that we were able to keep the white polka dots on the curtains? And that's because those were stenciled on with paint and Rit dye, it does not absorb into paint. So dyeing fabric in your washing machine really is an easy and inexpensive way to change 
your clothing or home decor items that are fabric around your home. There are a lot of steps, but again, we'll have those in our comment section pinned so you can go print those out. It's a lot to stress about. <laughs> but you know what, you follow it step by you step do, and, and it's, it's really not that hard and difficult. It's just remembering the steps. So did we cover it all? Do you still have questions? Are you more confused than ever? <laughs> Be sure to drop your comments down below and we will get back to you on those. And we're still gonna cover all of those frequently asked questions here in just a second. We hope that you liked this video and that you learned some tips that will help you to successfully dye fabric in your washing machine. So before we go through those frequently asked questions, will you please like this video and tap the notification bell so you'll know when we post new videos and you'll be able to follow along as we complete this extreme bedroom makeover. Up next, we're gonna show you how you can make a modern floating nightstand and how you can do it for free. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. First, we're going to recap what fabrics work best with RIT all-purpose dye. And that would be your natural fibers such as, so cotton, linen, ramy, uh, hemp, uh, wool. Um, I think that's all of the natural ones. I might have missed one or two. And then you can also do synthetic fibers such as nylon, rayon, and viscose. If you're unsure if your fabric can be dyed with the RIT all-purpose dye, just do a little test dye, do a little sample of the fabric and dye that and see how it works out before you do a, a large piece. That way you can achieve the results you want without any surprises with the dyeing process. If you're working with a blend fabric that has some polyester mixed in with the cotton, if it's less than 35% polyester, you can use your all-purpose RIT dye. But if you're looking to dye something that is more than 35% or it's more of a synthetic fiber, you can use the RIT Dye More dye and that will do those fabrics. And that would be fibers such as a polyester or blend that has more than 35% polyester, and then an acetate or an acrylic. Okay, the second question, do you use RIT dye in hot or cold water? Fabric dye loves hot water. It loosens those fibers and lets that dye get into all of them. So make sure to use the hottest water possible that is safe for your fabric. That way you can achieve the best vibrant and long lasting colors that you can. All right, our next question is, do I need a fixative? So it's recommended that you use the fixative if you're using bright colors, those intense colors or dark colors because that's really going to lock in that color. If that's not a look you're going for, you're doing something more pastel, you really don't need to use that fixative. But that is really important for the bright colors but it will also reduce fading in your fabric. And you also want to remember to use that fixative right after you dye the fabric before you rinse the dye out. Okay, the next question is how do you know whether you should add salt or vinegar to your dye bath? And again, we've gone over this a lot because it is really important, but you're going to add one cup of salt to the mixture for every dry pound of fabric that you have for all of those natural fibers. And you're going to use vinegar, again, one cup for every dry pound for the more synthetic fabrics. All right, so how do you weigh the fabric? That's one of the questions people want to know. So if you have a food scale and it will fit on a food scale, you can go ahead and use that. But if not, this is how we did it. Got on the scale, holding the fabric, and then set the fabric down and weighed ourselves again, and then just subtract the difference. Okay, and just for some other helpful tips, you wanna just make sure to check your fabric before dyeing. Check for any blemishes or stains that will prevent your fabric from getting that nice even or level dyeing so that the color can be evenly absorbed and it won't be compromised by any marks on your fabric. And you want to remember also that it is two packages of the dry dye for every pound of fabric or one liquid bottle for every pound of fabric. And if you really want to intensify that color, you can double the amount of dye you're using. It's important that you're really accurate when you're measuring this because that's going to ensure that you get uniformity in your dyeing process. All right, and last, as recommended on the RIT dye website, you want to add a teaspoon of liquid dish detergent to help promote that level dyeing. So 
Did we answer all your questions? We hope so, but if we didn't, again, please just drop us a comment below and we will get back to you. It depends on the type of fabric you're drawing. Oh. So, drawing? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dying. Okay, try that again. Okay. Wait, what? You put detergent in there? No, then you wash it with detergent. See how many steps there are? It's confusing. I know, there's okay. a lot. Now that we're done dyeing the 